Hello everyone, thank you so much for joining me again. Um, you kind of wonder why there's so much color going on. Well, this was my inspiration on this palette. I was walking around Ikea and I saw the colors in this and it was springy, but it had these blacks and dark blues and um, so it really inspired me. There's quite a few different colors all the way up. Um, it inspired me to make a palette and along with this little like pillow cover. It's funny where you find inspiration out walking about. So I had my eyes on the Opacity palette by Da Vinci and when I was looking on there I'm like you know what I probably have quite a few of um, these colors in my collection, but maybe I'll add to it just a few. And that's what I did. I ordered a few and um, I got the Stormy Blue, uh, Indanthrone Blue, Denise's Gray, Deep Purple, Da Vinci Red Tint, which is in their new um, spring line, as well as the Peach. Um, so I went ahead and I got these and most of the other colors I had and I added two and came up with this. And this is my new, what I call velvet palette. I know I'm silly, I name all my palettes or theme them. There is different brands in this. Usually I keep one brand to a palette, but I just got inspired and had to put it all together. So we're going to be swatching these out today, um, checking out the new colors and as well as what else I put in this palette. So let me get the chart going. I was just looking at it. It does match pretty good. I'm kind of impressed. So we're going to get to swatching. First one up is Stormy Blue. It wets like a dream. And that pigment was uh, PB60 and PR101. With these colors, since they are, a lot of them are so opaque, I'm not even going to be able to see my writing. So we have Neutral Tint by PWC, Shinhan, PB66, PBK11, Lavender, PW6, PV15. And this one's Da Vinci. Some of these are completely opaque, some are semi-opaque, and there is a couple of semi-transparents in this grouping, just so that I could round out the palette. Now we have Denise's Gray, PR101, PB36, Da Vinci. This color is so gorgeous. I'm glad I got the tubes of... She is so fabulous. I'll put a link to her channel in the description if you're interested in checking out her whole opacity palette. Deep Purple, PV23. And this is Da Vinci. That is gorgeous. 
You need a vibrant purple. We go into lilac. PV19, PB29, PW6. Quite a few of these lighter colors have white. This is also by Da Vinci. You'll have to let me know down in the comments if you like these kind of mixed curated sets inspired by different kind of items and things like that. They're quite fun to put together. We have Quinn Purple, PV55 by Michael Harding. And this color is one of the semi-transparents in here. But it gave me off that velvety vibe. Now we're going into purple gray, PR122 and PW6. And this is a PWC color by Shinhan. If you hear a little snoring in the background, that'll be my doggy. He's definitely out cold behind me. He's always pretty much at my feet. Quinn Rose PV19. And this is another one of the semi-transparents. Kind of round out the palette. By Michael Harding. Very pretty. Perline Maroon. Sorry about my delay there. I was trying to get the paint on the brush. <laughs> By Da Vinci, PR 179. We kind of slid off camera. The last two were Cad Red D, PR108, and Natfall by Da Vinci. This was M. Graham. This is Da Vinci, PR170, Natfall. Next row down, we're going into Red Tint, which is one of Da Vinci's new colors for their spring collection. PR204, PW6. I really like this color. It's quite pretty. Matches my color inspiration well. Then we have Davies Gray by Da Vinci. PW6, PG7, PBK6. It's a beautiful muted greeny gray.
Prussian Green, PB29, PG7, and it's by Mission Gold. I think that's the only Mission Gold we have in this palette. Boy, my little dog Stanley back there is really snoring up a storm. Sorry if you can hear that. Beautiful. Then we go into Olive by Michael Harding, PB15.3, PR101, and PY180. I think I have all my opaque colors in this palette that I own. I went through pretty much every tube. There's a few that looked too similar, so I didn't put those in. So maybe, except for just a couple. Little mess. I always have to make a little mess. This color is so beautiful. Chrome Oxide, PG-17. By Isero. I think this is the only Isero in this. They have some lovely paints. I did a whole video on their on the collection I have from them. I can put the link in in case you're interested in something a little off mainstream. And you can get it at Jackson's. Cad Green PY35 PG26 by PWC. And PWC is Shinhan, their professional line. I only have a few from them and from Mission Gold, but the ones that I have are quite nice. Cobalt Teal by Core. PG-50. Core makes some beautiful colors. They tend to move on the paper a lot. And I'm a little bit of a control freak, so I don't use them as often as I should. They are beautiful, though. Vivid Blue by Michael Harding. PB15, PB7, PW4, PW6. So it has a lot of white in it. Beautiful sky color. Ooh, look at what that one's doing. wanted to show you quick. The Denise's Gray is doing such interesting things right there. Ah, absolutely gorgeous. Cerulean PB36. Michael Harding. These paints, Michael Harding paints are really smooth. They re-wet like a dream. They dry, they work like an M-gram, but they dry down a little bit more harder in the pan. 
<clears throat> Cobalt by Michael Harding, PB23. Blue Gray by PWC Shinhan, PB 15.3, PW 6. Oh, it's, the weather's getting nice. I can hear the motorcycles going by. In Danthrone, PB60. And I was kind of surprised I didn't have this in my collection. And by Denise Soden's um, add-ons to her opacity palette, she said this one would be a great one. And that's how it ended up in this palette. This is by Da Vinci, PB60. And I have to say, she's absolutely right. goes well with the opaque colors. It's not a completely opaque color though. I think it runs semi. But wow. Da Vinci does a beautiful job. Now we go into a classic buff titanium PW6 colon 1. This is by, this one's by Michael Harding. I do have a few in my collection. It's a great mixing color for making some soft colors. Pastelli. A little bit of water on that one. Then we have sepia, and I don't know why I don't have the pigment info there. And this one's by Michael Harding. And I thought I needed a darker brown in this, and I think this is semi. Or at least what they say on the tube. That's why I put the lines through it. We can take a closer look and see which ones are a little more transparent than others. And this one's Pousset by Michael Harding, PR102. This one on the tube says semi-opaque, but it does look quite transparent here right now. We'll see how that one dries up. M. Graham, Raw Sienna, PBR7. And then we have um, Ochre Havana uh, France by Michael Harding. And this one is PY42 MPR102. It's 
kind of fun to see the brands uh, swatched side by side as well. Naples Yellow by Michael Harding, PBR 24. This is a very orangey one. And I actually have two Naples in this thing because they look very different. Now we have Naples by PWC, and that is PY35 and PW6. Oops. It's amazing how different brands use the same name for very different colors. Warm Light Yellow by Michael Harding. PW6, PW4, and PY43. This is another one of those brilliant mixing colors that I've kind of growing to really like. Cadmium Golden Yellow by Michael Harding, PY35. Then we have one of the new ones in the spring line of Da Vinci called Peach. PB88, PY43, PY65, PW6. That was a mouthful. And the color is splendid. I kind of like these really rich pastels where they're not totally muted out but they still have a pastel y feel to them. That's how I'm feeling this spring. This one is Cad Orange. Michael, um, I'm sorry, M. Graham, and it's PO20. M. Graham is another brand that has fabulous paint. Although it stays a little sticky, it's not great for travel, especially if you live in a humid climate. Indian Red, Michael Harding, PR 101. And we're going to shift all the way over here for this last little one. Last but not least, it is Violet Iron Oxide PR101 by Da Vinci. These colors might look a little 
out of order. I didn't lay them out exactly how the palette is laid out. Um, just for space. So let's go ahead and zoom out. And take a look. It does kind of match. <laughs> and you can see the palette's laid out a tiny bit different. So we'll let those dry, we'll do a tape pull, and we'll check them up close. I wanted to go ahead and um, show you the layout that's actually in the palette, the little card that I have on the side. And you can see all the inspiration around it. I think it kind of all goes together quite well. And so let's get into the tape pull. Oh, I also used a Quill uh, Jackson's 10-0. Um, in case anyone's interested, these brushes are awesome and very affordable, and I wrote everything out with a Micron 005. So, let's get into the tape pull. I had a little trouble with my tape pull up here. I don't know why it stuck just in that one spot, but let's go ahead and get a closer look. You can see where I had a little paint where the tape kind of grabbed it. Denise's gray is really stunning. If you find these videos helpful and are interested in color or swatches, paint-alongs, or urban sketching, please consider subscribing. It does really help out the channel and I'd really appreciate it. So, um, how do you get your inspiration? I mean, I got mine in a pillow cover and a little floor mat and stuff. Um, let me know down in the um, comments on how you get your inspirations and do you collage your palettes or do you put all the brands um, in their own palette? I kind of do both. Uh, let me know down in the comments. I really appreciate you joining me today and staying with me so long. You have a great day. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.